Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Myth Busting. In this one we are going to be investigating Chorus Fruit Teleportation. As you can hear it has a sound similar to that of an Enderman when the Enderman teleports. However it is its own unique sound within the game. Now the Chorus Fruit drops from the Chorus Flower of the Chorus Plant which you can see behind me. And when eaten it will teleport the player to a new location. It will also restore two haunches of hunger down here. And it can be eaten when your hunger bar is full, the only food in the game to do so. As well as that, it also has a cooldown after being used, similar to that of an ender pearl. So it says on the wiki that you can teleport up to 8 blocks in each direction, and that includes upwards and downwards as well. And I have a friend who reads the game code who has actually confirmed this for me, so we're going to start off with a test to see if teleporting in either of the directions is going to have any sort of bias from the location where the player starts. So I set up this testing facility that we have right here. It's quite simple. We're going to stand in the middle, we're going to eat chorus fruit, and we'll get randomly teleported around us. Now this is bigger than eight blocks in each direction. I think it's 10, so we should see um, that we don't get teleported any further than eight blocks. But when we land on one of these pressure plates, we're going to activate the command block down below. That is going to summon some falling sand up in the sky. And that's going to create a visual representation of where we teleported to. So we have um, you know, the glass or the sand that falls down stacking up. And that way we'll be able to visually see where we're getting teleported to over time. So as well as doing that, it's also going to give us a chorus fruit back so that we can continue eating them and teleporting at random. It's going to teleport me back to the very middle and it's also going to summon an item down below which will just be a stone block and that will go into the hopper and that means I can also use the hopper to count just in case there's any sort of problem um, with the falling sand up above which I don't think there will be but that way we're going to get a visual representation which we're going to do in a time lapse and we'll have the numbers down below from the items in the hopper to count them as well. Unfortunately there isn't going to be a time lapse. The reason why? As I was about to record it, I realized I made a big mistake with this test. However, I decided to run the test anyway, and we've still been able to learn a few things from it, which is a good thing, of course. So, what was the mistake that I made? It was to use pressure plates here, because for each time this guy teleports, I assumed he would land on one pressure plate, and we would get one block up above. Whereas, actually, this guy can teleport to a position where he'll be standing on multiple pressure plates, and then multiple blocks will be summoned at once, just like then and like there as well. So that creates a problem, but it also teaches us a few things as well. First of all, this guy isn't getting teleported in whole numbers, i.e., you know, 8 or, or 4 or 5. He can be teleported 5.5 because if this guy was teleported a whole number each time, he would always land on the top of a pressure plate and activate one at a time. So we've learned that the distance isn't absolute to whole numbers. Now, another thing we've learned is that the range is 8. You can clearly see that up the top here. And you might be thinking that there is a little bit of a bias. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop this test in a moment and change all the glass because it's kind of hard to see. Um, but there might be um, a bit of a bias here because you can see that on the outside here, there's always seemingly less blocks around the very outside than there is on the inside. But of course, this is because you have a higher chance of landing on multiple pressure plates on the inside. Whereas if you get teleported the maximum eight, you're going to only summon the one block to fall down on the edge here. So it would have been nicer to have a more accurate and telling test. But unfortunately, I have put hours of time into this and now we have to move on. However, I thought you'd like to know how many blocks were placed in total. There are 2,550 here, and Assumavoid, my second account, ate 1,407 chorus fruit in total. So that's an average of 1.8 blocks for each chorus fruit consumed. Now, my conclusion is that this is very random with no obvious patterns emerging, and for that reason, I am happy to move on. I don't think there's anything too much to be learned here that's practical for survival. So the next test is with the vertical axis, that's going upwards and downwards, and I have done a test as well to confirm that the motion go up is 8 blocks and the motion go down is 8 blocks as well. However, I wanted to find out if there would be any bias to whether it went upwards or downwards or just stayed at relatively the same height. So I set up this crude test right here, it's not the best or most accurate way of doing it, but it has yielded some results that will suggest that there is no bias. But first of all, let me explain um, how this works. So the player's going to stand there in the middle. When they eat the chorus fruit, they're going to get teleported to one of these pressure plates with a command block below. So like we learned before, if it 
can activate multiple ones at once, that can be an issue. So that's why I've set it up this way. What it's going to do is create a redstone block over at this position. So if it activates four of them at once, that's not going to be an issue. This is going to get powered. It's going to teleport the player back to the middle so the test can start over again. It's going to summon an item above this hopper so we can count which floor it went to. It gives the player a chorus fruit back again, and then this one right here sets this back to stone so it can be converted to redstone and do that process all over again. So each time that it summons an item to the hopper, it means we get to count how many times the player has been to that floor. And I put the results into a chart. And for the five different floors, you can see there doesn't appear to be any bias at all, really. There is a slight difference, but of course, that's always going to happen with random chance. So now we get to move on to something a little bit more interesting. Which of the blocks in the game can't you teleport to? Luckily, lava is one of them. So here is a more frightening test. Now we have netherrack and fire everywhere. And unfortunately for us, you can actually teleport into fire. Which is not a good thing really, is it? So here's another one for you. You can't teleport to repeaters. What's all that about, eh? And now we have a bunch of end rods. And notice that we didn't teleport to the end rod or on top of it, but between it, which is important. And here we have a bunch of mob skulls. And guess what? You can't teleport to them or between them. You're going to be stuck on the same spot. And to make matters more confusing, you can also teleport to trapdoors. Now these have a hitbox similar to the size of the repeater, yet for some reason you can teleport to these. So the code that says what you can and can't teleport to outside of your regular blocks is a little bit messy and confusing, but we managed to get there in the end, and basically it uses a list of blocks that can be popped off or destroyed by water. So imagine that these things right here are placed in your world and you put down a bucket of water to, next to it, and then these things are going to pop off or the fire will be put out. Now this list over here are things that you can teleport to, inside that list and this also includes all types of crops, double flowers, ferns, tall grass, uh, small flowers, all the types of saplings and rails as well. Now the second list, list over here are the things that you can't teleport to and these all have hitboxes. Now the important thing to notice here is the size of the hitbox um, comes into effect because we can teleport between the end rods but not between the mob heads and the key word there is between because if you were paying attention to the video we didn't actually teleport on top of the end rod we teleported between it because there was space so technically we were teleporting onto the block below but these are all the ones that you can't teleport to so you might be wondering well how come you can teleport to um, trap doors the reason why is because this isn't on the list these items aren't destroyed by flowing water and therefore you can teleport to them again if you watch the video closely you'd notice that we're actually sort of teleporting above the block a little bit and that's because it's treating it like it's a, a whole block so as well as that you also can't teleport to uh, water or lava there is an exception for those two so that's all I have to tell you about the Chorus Fruit teleportation for now. And I'd like to say a massive thank you to my buddy Skyliner W who's been helping me with all of the information about the code. We've also been looking at a few other things. So now with Mythbusting also comes some code confirmation, which is a really good thing uh, that we haven't had for a long time. So that's good to know that all of this is sort of verified to some extent. Anyway, uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like as always. Thank you so much for your support. Hope you enjoyed today's video. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.